In the last lectures, we've looked at integers and floating point numbers. Now let's take a look at the concept of true and false in C. Again, I've made up a program for you. You don't have to do any typing, or much typing at least in this lecture. You want to get the file from www.soromatic.com slash upload slash truefalse.c. Let's take a look at that file. Okay, the main point is that unlike integers and floating point numbers, C does not have any real concept of true and false as a Boolean value. So the way C handles this is quite simple. If a value is zero, that represents false. Any other value represents true. Okay, so in this code, I've declared an integer variable i and a floating variable z, and I've set up a bunch of conditionals. If such and such, then print such and such. Okay, what would happen when we say if zero, then print something? Well, zero is supposed to be false, in which case this conditional should be false, and this print statement should not occur. But if one, one is not zero, so it should evaluate the true, this print statement should print out. Similarly with if negative one, because negative one is not zero. However, if we have if 0.0, .0 well, again, 0.0, .0 or zero is supposed to be false. So this conditional is not true and this statement should not be printed. However, with 0.3 and 0.6, they're not zero, so they should evaluate the true and they should both be printed. I'm gonna explore this further with a for loop where I let the integer variable i go from negative five to five in increments of one. If i, then print f the value. Okay, what would we expect here? Well, from negative five to negative one, those are not zero, so they should evaluate the true and those should print out. However, zero should not, and then one to five should. Now I'm gonna introduce the negation operator. A negation operator flips true to false and false to true. So in this case, when i equals zero, i is false, i equals zero is false, not false is true, then the conditional is true, then we should print out zero here. And the other value should not print out. Okay, to make things a little more interesting, I do, a sim do similar loops with floating point. I go from negative 0.5 to 0.5 in increments of 0.1, and we see what prints out. Similarly with z from negative one to one with increments of one eighth, and we see what prints out. Let's take a look and run this. We compile. and we execute. Let's pipe that to more so we can see more clearly what's going on. Okay, as expected, when the conditional was zero, that was false, so the, the statement did not print out. However, one is true, negative one is true, 0.3 and 0.6 are true. 0.0, .0 is not true. Okay, so this is consistent with the idea that 0.0, .0 or zero is false and everything else is true. Now let's take a look at the integer test. Negative five to negative one is true. One to five is true. The zero did not print out. That's because it's false. However, when we negate the value, it says zero is false, and that's correct, and no other values came out. Now let's look at the floating point test. Negative 0.5, negative 0.4, they're not zeros, so they're true. Similarly, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 up to 0.5, but we have ourselves something strange here it says zero, or negative zero, is true. Well, what's happening here? There's some sort of logical error because I've just said to you that zeros are false. Well, there seems to be a logical error, but there really isn't, and it has to do with the way floating points are represented in a computer. Although we start with negative 0.5, which can be represented exactly in binary notation on a computer, the increment, 0.1, cannot be. So what's happening is that once we get to what looks like zero, it's not exactly zero. We have round off error. There's errors in precision. And so although it looks like this value is zero, if we could print out more decimal places, we'd see that it's actually not zero. This points out you know, some real problems with respect to using floating point numbers on a computer. 
Arithmetic on a computer is not the same as mathematical arithmetic. We know that if we sit there and take negative 0.5 and add 0.1 numerous times, we'll get the exact values that we want. This is not true on a computer, and hence, doing things like using floating point in for loops is a very dangerous thing. Let's look at the last test, where we go from negative 1 to 1. Everything is true except for 0. In this case, everything worked, why? worked correctly. Why is that? That's because 1 eighth, which is 1 over 2 cubed, can be represented exactly in a computer. So all these numbers are actually represented exactly. There are no precision errors. And in fact, we get exactly 0 0.00000 forever. It's exactly 0, so it's false and does not print out. Okay. You might say that the problem with this is the fact that we used only a float. That's fairly low precision. So let's up the precision to a double. Recompile, run again. But we still have the same problem. It looks like zero, but it's not really zero. So you say, well, maybe we still need more precision. Let's go to a long double. Okay, in this case, we have to change our print up a little bit to say that we want a long double. We recompile. And we still have the same problem. It still comes up with something close to zero, but it really is not zero. This is not something that we can solve with just added precision in the computer. Also note that we don't get printed 0 0.5. Again, we're off just a little bit on the 0.1, and in fact, this is a little greater than 0.4 in reality, and when we add 0.1 again, we're a little greater than 0.5, so the 0.5 situation actually did not occur and did not print out. However, everything is still fine when we have no precision issues. We can test this once again with a simple little statement. For example, if negative 0 0.5 plus 0.1 plus 0.1, plus 0.1, plus 0.1, plus 0.1 equals 0. And printf success. Well, mathematically speaking, we know this to be true. Negative 0.5 plus 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.1 does equal 0 mathematically, but it doesn't when we do things on a computer. So what we've done in this lecture is we've looked at the concepts of true and false, but we've also tied in the concept of precision and just showed you that you have to be really careful when you do real valued arithmetic on a computer because it is not the same as mathematics. And you have to be extremely careful in how you do this. Okay, end of lecture.